Well, hello there. It's Dave and your boy Jacob here with another slice of jolly hardwareism. Yes, and this week we're looking at what AMD's graphics peeps can do in response to the barrage of GPU goodness that's come out of Camp GeForce over the last couple of weeks. At SIGGRAPH, NVIDIA first announced that it was indeed unveiling a new GPU architecture with the codename Turing, and that it was going to be the greatest leap since the invention of the CUDA GPU. Bold claims, but the twin pillars its bravado is built on is Microsoft DXR API and its own RTX lump of hardware and software, all of which is designed to facilitate real-time ray tracing coming to games this year and beyond. Yes, and then at Gamescom just a few weeks back, Nvidia showed off its new consumer GPUs, the RTX 2080 Ti, 2080 and 2070, the next-gen GeForce cards which are set to offer a new world of gaming fidelity. It's not just the super demanding ray tracing that Nvidia is bringing to the table. Nope, its work in the field of AI and deep learning is also being brought to bear on some of the most important imagery problems in the world, PC game graphics. Yeah, the new GPUs are full of ray tracing and AI silicon and are still offering higher performance in normal gaming terms too. So what the hell can AMD do in the face of this graphics tech onslaught? What indeed. So Nvidia has the edge in general gaming performance terms and by quite a big way. It's been that way throughout pretty much of the last generation of GPUs and that lead looks like it's only going to grow from here. So AMD needs to be smart and understand and admit that it's not going to be able to compete at the high end of the gaming GPU market this time around. Yeah, Vega was a bust, whatever the pre-release hype suggested, but in the mainstream market, ignoring the madness which followed the mining boom, the RX 580 was still the card to go for over the mighty GTX 1060. That's where the volume cards live too. They're the ones where, if you gauge the price-performance ratios right, you can make a killing. And with Nvidia seemingly looking to price garage the living hell out of the GPU market with the pricing of the already announced 20 series cards, it wouldn't be a surprise for the mainstream GeForce GPUs to follow suit with super high prices too. This is where AMD's Navi can swoop in and make a real name for itself. From what we've heard from GPU manufacturers, Navi is going to be more of a follow-up to Polaris than Vega. That means the 7nm GPU due to launch in the first half of 2019 is going to form the basis of the next-gen AMD mainstream cards. And if Team Radeon can match the performance of a GTX 2060 or an RTX 2060, however Nvidia wants to name them, but with a lower sticker price, everyone's going to want in and it could sell a shitload. Technical GPU distributor term there. Yep. Ray tracing is a compute problem. AI powered super sampling is largely a compute problem too. These are not features which are in any way dependent upon which GPU architecture has the most powerful silicon for rasterized rendering. And AMD's GCN architecture was designed with a specific focus on generating as much compute power with the hardware at its disposal as possible, and as such is capable of a certain level of ray tracing too. Yeah, as soon as Microsoft announced DirectX ray tracing and Nvidia planted its flag in the ground at GDC, AMD also declared its Radeon Pro render tech could also deliver real time for 3D professionals. It did promise to talk more about the new rendering techniques to enhance gaming graphics, but so far it still hasn't published any details about what exactly it's doing with developers. That said, its Radeon Rays 2.0 feature, the developer focused ray tracing technology also spoken about at GDC, has been designed to work with Microsoft's DXR and focus on the same bounding volume hierarchy technique that Nvidia's RT cores are dedicated to. Again, it's looking at augmenting rasterized rendering with ray trace lighting and reflections. As we said, it's a compute problem and Radeon Ray specifically accelerates the BVH ray tracing technique, though probably not yet to the extent that dedicated hardware does. But AMD's plan for the future is to try and double down its compute power to even greater effect by firing fewer actual rays and using denoising techniques to make up the fidelity shortfall. AMD has also specifically spoken about how using multiple GPUs is something that it's working towards with Radeon Rays. If it goes back to its old model of creating affordable GPUs to compete at a mainstream level and a multi-GPU card to compete at the high end, there's still a possibility we could see a serious ray tracing Radeon gaming card. We spoke with AMD's head graphics guru David Wang at Computex this year and he explained that while multi-GPU development was incredibly tough when you're asking two GPUs to render games, on the compute side it's much, much easier. The possibility of using multi-GPU to manage the combined compute power of AMD's future Navi GPUs could make a big difference to its chances of getting the advanced feature running on its cards. For all the naysayers claiming ray tracing is a gimmick technology that's never going to change the world of PC gaming, that's what was said about a host of other rendering techniques just before they became widely adopted. We're of the opinion that ray tracing will become the de facto standard for high-end lighting in PC games. Once the performance struggles have been overcome, it'll be the simplest way to create high fidelity scenes without developers having to mess around with shadow maps and artificial reflections. But probably not for a while. 
Nvidia has kicked off the first generation of real-time ray tracing hardware now, and it's probably a smart move for AMD to let the green team swallow the pain of the early adopter and the difficulty in fostering an emergent ecosystem. AMD isn't going to be a leader in ray tracing this generation, so it could just focus on traditional rasterized rendering, keep working on its DirectX ray tracing implementations in the background, and hit the ground running when the next generation arrives. With Navi potentially the last AMD GPU architecture to use the old GCN design, future graphics silicon could be more targeted to this end anyway. All AMD has to do with ray tracing this time around is make sure its pro render tech is in a fit state for the professionals to use with their shiny Macs, make sure it allows them to do some pseudo real-time professional ray trace rendering, and maybe show off the odd work in progress demo to show it's still in the case on the gaming front. So it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom on the AMD graphics front. There have been a lot of green-blooded folk claiming the end is nigh for Team Radeon, with Nvidia seemingly owning real-time ray tracing. But while it's currently the only company actually showing real hardware running ray traced games at playable frame rates, it's not an Nvidia-exclusive technology. Yeah, all of the demos that Nvidia showcased at Gamescom recently have been built using Microsoft's DXR API. They may be developed and running on Nvidia hardware, but they're using an API that can run on other hardware in the future, should that tech arrive. AMD might have to seed the high end for the next year or so, but this isn't the end of Radeon. It's just the start of another battle. So thanks for watching, and if you've liked what you've seen, then give us a like and subscribe, and hit the bell to see more PC gaming and hardware goodness from the PC Games N team. Bye!